Welcome back. So we're going to be talking about how to build a slideshow with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript today. And first thing I want to talk about is the CSS. We'll do a little bit of CSS and talk about how we're actually doing the transitions, and then we'll jump into the JavaScript. So here's my HTML file. I have just some basic styles. This is the content that's on my web page. It's not the slideshow styles. And I have down at the bottom here my JavaScript, and we're going to go through this and see how this works. But this really should be an external file. So if somebody was, if you were building a slideshow component to be used on multiple websites, you'd have your script as the one component. It would then load the data, it would then load the CSS. So here's the CSS that I'm using for my slideshows. The slideshow class, this is the container that holds everything. So it's got a background color, fills the entire page, it's got a height. Um, we're going to use this to contain everything. Then uh, we'll make it position relative so that all of these slideshow items, these are the individual cards that are going to be sliding across the screen, they're positioned absolute inside of something relative, so they are contained within here. And then they have zero on all sides for the positioning, so they just fill the entire slideshow. Then we've got padding, top and bottom is zero, left and right is four, and that is creating this space here and the space over here. That's this four REM. Now the rest of this, this is all about the transitions, the movement. So we're saying transition all the properties, take a half second to do it, and the default so slideshow item, as soon as something's indicated as being a slideshow item, it is 100% translated X. That means it's off the right-hand side of the screen. So off the right-hand side of the screen is the next item that's going to be loaded. And by default, all of them are stacked over there. Current, translate zero, means it's being shown on the screen. And then leaving, I'm moving it to negative 100%, so it's going off the right-hand side. Now the reason we have three states here is we're taking the current item, we're moving it off the right, and then and we're doing that with adding the leaving class. Then before it's its turn again, I'm removing this class, which puts it back to the default, which is off to the right. So this is going off the left, it's fading, and then it's being thrown over to the right-hand side to be ready for the next time that it's given the current class. And only one thing at a time, will have the current class. Now that's the translate. I'm also doing opacity. Current gets one and everything else gets zero. So it is, if you notice, it's fading as it disappears, as it moves off to the left, it is fading away as well. And that way we don't see it sliding back over to the right hand side because opacity is zero. We don't see it. Z index, the current is 20, everything else is 10. So this is always going to be on top of everything else as well. So that's the CSS. I have a JSON file where I've got all of the content and what we could do is we could have this locally. Maybe somebody is supposed to create their own slideshow.json file, they put all their content in, there'll be a title, an image, and then the message that's going to go along with it. You can customize this, you can add anchor tags, you can add whatever you want inside of here or add click events. I'll show you the, the script and you can customize it to do whatever you like. Right, let's look at the script now. So I have one object called slideshow. On DOM content loaded, I'm calling slideshow.init. And that's what gets this whole thing going. So as soon as the page is loaded, call slideshow init. That's going to do the work of setting up the slideshow so that it's ready to run. I have three properties inside here. Items. This will be an array that contains all of the items that we load inside of here. So if we want to reference anyone in particular, we'll have this and we can reference them by number. 0, 1, 2, 3. Timmy, this is my timer. This is my delay. Um, I'm using this to keep track of the, each of the delays. So if I want to stop the thing from running, Timmy's what I use to stop it. And then the delay, I have a default set to 3000. This is going to be three seconds. 
So I made this into a property here so that I could quickly and easily change what the delay is going to be. If I want to change it inside of some other function, I could also do that. I could say slideshow.delay equals and a new value. All right, let's look at the init function. So first thing I'm doing, I'm checking to make sure that I have something on the stage or on the, on the web page with the class slideshow right here. This is my div with the class slideshow. If I don't have this, it means there's no place for me to load the slideshow, so I'm not going to do it. This would be a requirement. I'd say, okay, include my JavaScript file, define your own JSON file, and make sure you've got a div somewhere on the page where you want the slideshow to appear, and give it the class slideshow. Then all they have to do is include this, and they're good to go. So I'm creating a div, giving it the class name content, and the content is where I'm going to be appending all of my items. Now, I have this as a separate container because in some slideshows, you'll notice they've got the little buttons down the side, down the bottom here, or on the left and right sides, they've got arrows to move forward and back through it. So I keep all of the main content that I'm going to be viewing inside of its own div. That way, if you want to customize it, if you want to add another div with the bullets down at the bottom that you can click on, or the ones that indicate which the current item is, or the links on the left and right, you can still do that and do those in separate divs and not worry about impacting this. Here's the import of my slideshow. So I'm creating a link tag, I'm setting its rel to style sheet, setting an href. It's coming from the same place as my JavaScript file did. And then I'm, uh, or my JavaScript file and my JSON file. And then I'm appending that into the head of my document. So I've got the style sheets linked. I've got a div created where I'm going to put all of my content. Now to go get my JSON. So I'm using just the very basic fetch, not setting any parameters or anything. I'm just saying, okay, go grab my local JSON file. When it comes back, take the contents and extract the JSON equivalent of that, pass it down into here, and this is the function I'm going to call. So I have another function inside my slideshow object called load contents this is going to be called. And you can see right here, there's a property data. This property data is going to be the result that's returned from here. So if you understand fetch, if you understand promises, you know that whenever you return from one then, this value gets passed on to the next one. So here's the next then, here's the function being called. So this result is being passed into here, and that's what data is going to be. Now, inside of load contents, we're creating a new document fragment just to have a container where I can put all of the items once before I actually append them to that content div that we created right here inside my init, that content div. So I create a document fragment, and then I'm going to loop through the data that came back. If we look at the data again, it's an array called items. Inside of it, there's four items. So data.items for each, and I'm tracking the number and the actual item themselves. These are the items from the array item. I'm passing that into another function called createItem. I'm passing in the number as well because I want to stick that inside of each of the divs that gets created. Um, that way I can reference them by number later as well. If I want to use the thing with the bullets, I'm going to need to know what their number is so that I can target them. And then my document fragment, I'm appending the div that gets created. Now, create item, it's really not doing anything except creating the HTML. If we look in here briefly, I'm creating a div called slideshow item, I'm creating an h1, an image, and a paragraph tag, and I'm appending them all, and I'm returning this div this div comes back and gets appended to the document fragment. There's nothing new, nothing exciting going on here. One line I will take note of, which is the set attribute. This is the index number that I got, that I'm passing through. So their position inside that original JSON items array, that number is being appended 
as a property called data index. So every div will have its own index number that I can use later on as if I need to reference it. Okay, so let's create item. It just generates a div, sends it back here. We're putting it into this variable and then appending it to the document fragment. So we loop through those things. And then the whole document fragment, we find our slideshow content and append the document fragment to it. All right, now, to get this thing working. So we'll uh, refresh this. So here we are right now. This is it running. We've got the gray background. That's our content div. That's our main div. Everything's been appended, but they've all got the default styling, which puts them way off the right-hand side of the screen. OK, I don't need to do that. I don't need to look at that right now. What I want to do is I want to get one of those items onto the stage. So I've got to make the first one of those current. So document, query selector, and they all have the class slideshow-item. Inside the create item, slideshow item was the class that we gave to every one of those divs. So slideshow item, query selector will find you the first one on the page, which will be the first one in our list. And class list add current. Save that, jump back over here, refresh. There we go. The very first item from our array is now appearing on there. Now, saving this array of all the items, if we look back up here, items, this is where we want to save all of them. So if later on we're going to target them, this is where we want to save them so that we can. So slideshow dot items equals document dot query selector all and everything with the class slideshow item goes inside there. Now we have our own copy. We don't have to go and fetch it again. We've just got it saved so we can reference this at any point. Now to start the slideshow moving, because all we've done is put the first one here. We want to actually start them changing. We, we need to loop through those um, previous and, and next. So this one's got current, and then it's got leaving, so it moves off the side. And then we remove the leaving class and the current class, and it jumps back over to the right-hand side. We're going to call this function down here called start. So slideshow dot start. This is going to create a set interval. So it's going to run every three seconds because that's what we defined up here as the slideshow delay. So every three seconds, this function right here is going to run. So what is this function doing? Well, this function uses destructuring. So it takes everything inside of our items that we defined right here and it extracts them into two variables. First, we'll get the very first item inside the array, and then this will get everything else. So whether there's one, two, five, 17 items after the first, they will all go in here. This is like its own array. Then we flip them. We put the one that was first at the very end, and everything else in the same order goes at the beginning. So we're really just flipping the order. We're taking the first one and putting it at the end, taking the first, putting it at the end, taking the first, put it in the, at the end. Every time this function gets called, the first gets moved to the end of the array. And we're overwriting slideshow items. And because we're changing the order of the items in that array, that's why we want to have that data index saved. So inside each one of those divs, we're keeping that data index so that we have reference to its original position. And then switch item. So I've changed the order of the items inside this array. Now I want to reflect that change in the actual interface. So we're calling switch item and we're saying zero. This is the one that I want to switch. All right. So 
what are we doing with this? Now, I have EV here because switch item, if I was to add something like a link on the left or the right or bullets on the bottom that I could click on, they're going to be calling this function as well. And we need to know, based on which one we clicked, what the number was, but the event is also going to be passed in, and that may be something that we're going to use to extract. Hey, cl you clicked on bullet number three, that, therefore I'm going to show item number three. If you clicked on bullet number five, I'm going to show item number five. If the event is passed in, I'm going to do prevent default. If the event is not passed in, if this is null, like here, I'm just passing a number. I'm not passing in a second variable, so there's going to be undefined is going to be put inside of here. Therefore, this prevent default is not going to run because undefined is a falsy value. So we're skipping over this. Current. Well, there's only ever going to be one div with the class current inside of our slideshow. So we're going to find that and we're going to remove the class current and we're going to add the class leaving. Adding the class leaving without the class current is going to make it drop to Z index 10 and slide off the left hand side of the screen. Then, 0.8 seconds later, we're going to remove the class leaving. So it's not going to have current or leaving. That means it's default, so it's going to go from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. But the opacity has been set to zero, so we don't see it traversing. Let's see, if I go into my CSS and let's take out the opacities. So we've removed the opacities, we've turned on this, the start. Oh, let's check native. No, oh, no errors, okay. Oh, I don't think we saved our changes here. Yeah, there we go. Save the change, restart, and after three seconds, the bullhorn share. There we go. So it's sliding off, sliding off, sliding off. We're not changing the opacity, and because we're not changing the opacity, oh, but we do have a background color, I think. Yeah, I have background colors set up for each one of these. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the background colors for the first three. There we go. So we're just going to see the gray. Now when it goes off, we should be able to see, yeah, there we go. You see it going from the left-hand side back over to the right. With the color there, with the opacity, we don't see it moving. All right, let's put the colors back and we'll put our opacity back in. Just in case the opacity is there in case we don't have background colors. The background colors help to hide things as well. There we are. Everything's working well. Okay, and the last step inside of switch item is index. Which one are we setting the class current back onto? Well, if you remember here, inside of our start function, the thing that starts the timer running, we're calling switch item and we're always passing the number zero because we've always put the first at the end of the array and then whatever's next, that's the first thing. So that's what we're going to be putting as the current item. So I'm always calling zero, 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 zero. If I was using bullets, if I was using some other mechanism to target something, I could pass in a different number. But in our case, Slideshow items, number zero, the first one inside of this array right here, the first one is going to have the class current added to it. And that's the thing that makes it come onto the stage from the right-hand side. Okay, so I've got all three files saved as code gist so you can follow along, and I encourage you to experiment, to customize, and make this script your own. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.